I'm I'm sure they do, will cool down. Mr. Sampath, you know, while, while we're getting in some more breaking news, do you believe some of the world leaders right now, particularly in the West, will have to grudgingly accept uh, that you, you have President Trump back, you know, pushing ahead what he believes no longer can be a burden for America? You have uh, French President now saying that he's ready to work with uh, President-elect uh, Trump, not that he had much of an option, though, Abhishek. Here you have uh, Macron saying that ready to work together with uh, Trump, Sampat. Look, 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 you look, know, Shavan, sure, look, not much Europe, that he had no choice. Look at Europe. Macron is on his way out. Yeah. You know, uh, Olaf Scholz is on his way out. Uh, so effectively, Viktor Orban becomes the first European head of the government to actually congratulate Trump, and he is right. And uh, he is someone from, uh, made of the Trump politics, in fact, in many ways. So if you look at it, European leaders would be saying this with a lot of discomfort. Even irrespective of whether they are in or out, right. Europe is going to have a tough time dealing so, with the United States under Trump. Oh, that's an important area because uh, all this while, Europe essentially wanted to strengthen NATO. That will be perhaps the big friction point. Sampath, one quick word. I do understand it's late at night right now. But with regards to working with the European partners, do you believe that perhaps President Trump is going to alter it, keeping in mind that you cannot have much of a friction point right now? And then I'll also take our, our viewers to the numbers that are now coming in. Sampath, over to you. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, uh, initially the NATO was very... Uh, not so sure they want to do business with the uh, United States and the leadership of uh, President Trump because he demanded uh, uh, the right things to do because they had not paid the dues of uh, NATO for years and years. And the uh, U.S. was the only country paying and managing the whole uh, NATO. I think he set it right. So they were not very happy about uh, his demanding uh, the funding of the NATO. And I think it was much more stronger under the leadership. As you know, he has very close relations with uh, President Putin. Uh, he, used to, he told within 24 48 hours of his presidency, he was going to talk to President Putin and to stop the war between Ukraine and Russia. I think that will be the biggest gift to the world because we don't know what is really happening in uh, Ukraine, how many thousands and hundreds of thousands of people might, might have perished. We do, nobody knows because, you know, it's all under the rug. So I think uh, that will definitely um, bring a peace. So also in the Middle East, so also in the uh, Afghan uh, area where a U.S. left uh, suddenly and uh, they had to uh, rework uh, their system. I think uh, the whole world will be different uh, uh, place to right. continue. Their, their struggle to survive and live. I think uh, President Trump will make a big contribution. More than anything, I think he'll be a close friend of India, and we're looking for that. That's the only reason, in spite of uh, Kamala Harris uh, Indian heritage, we supported Trump because he is going to be much more closer to India, and uh, he has promised so many things. Uh, we'll, show, we'll make sure that uh, he, he does what he said. Uh, 